Let's pray. Father, we are grateful, giving us life and sustaining our lives. That despite what we may be going through at the moment, you have a good plan for us. I pray that all of your purposes and plans for our lives shall be fulfilled. The devil is not strong enough to hinder your purpose. You will fulfill your purpose. And in the circumstance we find ourselves, help us to, to sing. We shall sing for joy, smile at the storm, and we shall succeed in the end. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We are welcome to this day. We have been again to the story of this Joseph and looking at various dimensions of his life because God is actually taking us to the palace. But before he got to the palace, he had several experiences. And at this point, we are looking at what he experienced while in the prison. What did Joseph do while in the prison? In Genesis chapter 40, we're going to read from verse 8. And the captain, verse 4 rather, and the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and they served them, and they continue a season in word. Now, this was the, the event where the buckler and the baker that served Pharaoh have been thrown in the same, into the same prison with Joseph. And now in this prison, we see that he needed to show and take care of these prisoners just like he has been taking care of the other prisoners. You need to know who Joseph was. Joseph was a caring boy. Even in the most difficult circumstances, while he was in Potiphar's house, he cared. He was a sheep servant there. And now while he was in the prison, he cared. He became the chief prisoner. God so manifested his presence in his life, and everybody saw God in him, and they honored the Lord in his life. Our lives or experiences will prove to people that God is with us. Despite the circumstances, we may find ourselves in Jesus' name. You see, sometimes we are in difficult situations. Sometimes we are in a place or in, a, in some cases of things that we do not really like so well. In that experience, in that prison-like experience, God will glorify himself in our lives. Now we read that by verse 5. Genesis chapter 40 verse 5. And they dream, they dream both of them. That is the baker and the buckler. Remember, these are servants of Pharaoh. They were working in the palace and now they have been thrown to the prison. Why did God up? That, that happened because God was setting Joseph up to meet men that will matter in his getting to the palace eventually. Like we said the last time, God will connect us to people that matters in the name of Jesus Christ. And they dream, they dream both of them. Each man is dream in one night. Each man, according to the interpretation of his dream, the buckler and the baker of the king of Egypt, they were both bound in the prison. Now, in that prison, they dreamt. And God gave them that dream because God needed, number one, to give them the, make them understand what is ahead of them, their own future, but not just that, to be able to connect Dave Joseph with someone that will lead him to, his, to the palace. Look at verse, three, uh, verse, uh, verse 6. And Joseph came into unto them, in unto them in the morning, and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. Now Joseph saw them, and he saw they were sad. Now he should have been sad himself, that I went from my father's house, I became a servant in Potiphar's house, and now I'm in the prison house. All of those, he wasn't sobbing. He saw this thing to still rejoice. Look at what he said to them. And, the, and, his, and he asked fellow servant, that is Joseph, that while with him in the world of, his, of the Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? He said, Why are you so sad? Now, he didn't know they have a dream now. They told him. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretation belong to God. Tell me them, and I pray you. Now, you see here, Joseph asked them to tell him their dream. He wonder why you sad. We're in prison together, but we still have reasons to praise the Lord. You know, what we're seeing here is this. Despite the circumstance that Joseph found himself, he was still serving others. So I tie to this, serving rather than sighing. You are in prison, serving God, despite the condition. Serving rather than sighing. Stop crying. God knows what you are going through. God understands the situation. 
He permitted it, yes, but he can make you go over it. But the reason why God allowed you to get into that is because he knows, number one, you can learn in it. You can grow through it. And you can get better as a result of that experience. And there are several things that God wants you to learn in that experience. So that he permitted it means that he knows you can get over it. And you will get through successfully in Jesus' name. Don't cry. Don't weep. It's a difficult circumstance. God understand. I may not know how you feel, but God who knows how you feel, He will surely see you through in Jesus' name. Let's see the words that were given in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to verse 10. Unless I should be exalted above measure to the abundance of the revelation that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh. Here is Paul the apostle. He said there is a thorn in the flesh. There is something troubling my life. There is something happening to me I'm not happy about. In this place I am, I'm not really very happy here. I'm just trying to manage to cope with life. But then he said, despite this condition, I still have a reason to praise the Lord. See what he eventually said. He said, unless I should be exalted above measure, a thorn in the flesh was given unto me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exhausted, exalted above measure. So this was a difficult situation for him too. Now, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Maybe you have even prayed. And the problem didn't seem to go away, that it might depart from me. But what did God see? Look at it. He said, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in witness. God's grace is actually sufficient for us in that circumstance. You know what Paul now said? Because of that, he said, I can't change this situation. God understands the situation. What you cannot change, don't complain about. Just pray. And if after praying, God assures you by grace will grace see you through, He will surely see you through. Listen, after you have prayed, believe that grace will change. And God will make it change for good in Jesus' name. So what did we, what are we to do now? Like Joseph, most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmity. Glory in it. That the power of Christ will rest upon you. You see, if you glory in that infirmity, if you rejoice in the Lord despite that circumstances, if you are serving God despite the troubles around you, serve rather than sign. Sad. Sad. Rather than being sad and crying, God will see us soon. He has taken to many people in our circumstances like this before. And He will surely see us through this period in the name of Jesus. There is absolutely nothing too hard for our God to do. God will sustain us. Let's do this and pray. Heavenly Father, I know that some of my people, some of your children, are going through very tough, difficult situations. I commit them into your hand. You will carry us soon. Where we are at the moment, we are not the happiest of person. But we still want to serve you. Like Joseph was serving others. Was seeking to interpret their dream. Was seeking to know why they were sad. Was ensuring that they would be happy despite being in prison. Lord, the grace to smile at the storm. The strength to sing despite this, this tough time. Lord, you will grant unto us. And in the end, we shall conquer, we shall be victorious. Thank you, Lord. I pray for peace of every situation of everyone listening right now. The Lord will calm the storms in your life. And peace will be all over you despite the circumstance. And soon, very soon, we shall have great testimony in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. God bless you. We may be in a place we do not like so well now. Please look at it. In the nearest future, we will have good testimony. God bless you.